Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny. Welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm sorry for the delayed intro. I got temporarily distracted by somebody's DS. Sorry. Rephrase. It's a Vita. Oh, well. well that's even worse. That's it. You're, <laughs> you're being spaced right now. Goodbye. Get hey, back. I'm playing a Gundam game. <laughs> you are forgiven. Anyway, uh, tonight on the podcast, we have Amy, who's had to run away. We have Scarecrow, who is playing a Vita, Mr. Fancy Pants. Hey, only way I can play uh, some of the really good Gundam games. Okay, you'll be forgiven just for that reason. Um, <laughs> st- st- oh, I can hear Amy giggling. Um, we have Stuart the News Guy. Mm, greetings, everyone. Yes. Mm. Who is going to be shuffled. Goodbye, Stuart. <laughs> Dong. And last but not least, Metal Rift. I'm back. So, on and tonight... he gets instantly gonged. <laughs> I'm back too. Yeah, I you, gave you the intro, but you're away, so you missed out. So, anyway. All on, good sound. T- on tonight's show, we have the king and queen of sci-fi. We each get to nominate a person, and we'll work out who sort of wins and who doesn't. And, nah. um We also, later on, and we bump this to later, which was going to be first, um, because it's got spoilers in it, we're bumping it. We're going to have a talk about the most recent episode of Arrow and Flash and the consequences of that. And apparently my news guy has told me that he has a little bit of news. A little bit? <laughs> a little bit. More like more like 12 pages of news. Actually, that's a lot more than 12. So, so effectively, <laughs> oh, he, has, he has raided the Atlantis database and stolen heaps of info out of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's kick this thing off with... Our discussion on the king and queen of sci-fi. Um, I've got the chat open, so if anyone wants to comment, I'll more than happily read it out on the air. Uh, we'll start off with Scarecrow for a change. All right, king or queen? Uh, we'll go queen first. Now, this one's probably going to get me flamed. I know this is going to get me flamed, but Magel Roddenberry. Ooh. Yeah. I oh I can agree to that actually. No problem with me. Yeah, that's actually an interesting choice. Well, how many episodes of Star Trek has she been in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All Hint of them. Computer. She's the computer voice. <laughs> uh. All of them. Yeah. Uh. Well, see, when I because what happened, the backstory for this is that I posted up a picture on Save Sci-Fi and shared it on another page and said, who do we think is going to be the queen of sci-fi? Name the actress, not the character they play. And long story short, there was a bit of sort of crap hitting the fan and I'm just like, what the hell? Anyway, um, in the end, there was a poll created. And the poll currently stands like this. Amanda Tapping at 27 votes. Sigourney Weaver at 26 votes. Ah, uh, I, my brain is just stopped working. They're showing the calls. That one, yeah, Uhura. <laughs> at seventeen votes, Summer Glau at six votes, which I thought was intriguing because she has done a couple of sci-fi's, but uh, yeah. Well, let's face it, the Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor Chronicles wasn't that good. Yeah, wasn't as good as Firefly. She gets lots of extra points for Firefly. Majel ah. ba- Barrett. I, I'm not actually sure who that is. Mesh. We just... Michelle Roddenberry, you... Ugh. It's the same person. Michelle Roddenberry is Michelle Barrett. See, it's so easy to get him going. Just... I don't even have to try. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't rising to that day. <laughs> anyway, Tim Curry has got four votes. Linda Carter has three. Mary Shelley, three. Jewel State, three. Now, yeah... Jewel State, I think, deserves a little bit more credit than that. She, now, well, I think she was a bit of better character in Firefly than River Tam. Yeah. Yeah, hands down. And then she was also in Stargate, and she's quite a few times. Uh, Marina 
Back... Bakarin? Uh, wow, my... Bakarin. Bakarin. My brain is just not naming today. It's just gone, nope, names, you can't do them. Sucks to be you. It's just like you you're on a podcast, have, a have fun with that. <laughs> um, two votes, Aaron Gray, two votes. Kate Mulgrew... Two Wait, votes. what, Janeway made it on? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um, so yeah, so effectively it's a fan vote. You can add any person you want to to the list and go from there. Um, now for me, my vote was Amanda Tapping, and it wasn't just because she was in Stargate. It's also for what she's done outside of Stargate, because she directed quite a few episodes in Stargate. She created in her entire show herself, Sanctuary, um, which she which she created and helmed for the was it four or five years that it ran. Um, and she was the lead in that, which was brilliant. She's popped up in heaps of other shows. She does so it's much natural. charity work, it's not funny. Um, that's why I'd sort of be willing to, to aim it towards her. Um, Stuart, what about you? Uh, yeah, I'm going Amanda Tapping. It's either Amanda Tapping or Sigourney Weaver for me. Like Both are absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, both are amazing roles for the sci-fi genre. Oh. Yeah. Both have had into um, amazing careers I think I'm going to lean actually more towards Sigourney Reaver just because of this, I've seen Chappie recently and I really enjoyed her role in it okay I haven't actually seen Chappie yet wait she's in Chappie I ran yeah. out of, I ran out of money right. and couldn't get to see Chappie I'll, I'll spoilers. Spoilers. Really seen no this. spoilers or I will no no, no, no. You I, as I, target I, practice. I'm just saying the feels are real and that's it okay we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there we'll, we'll do a Chappie episode next week or the week after uh, probably the week after yeah. Um, when I actually get around to watching it. I've been so broke at the moment, it's not funny. Um, Sorry. What, yeah. Metal Rift, what do you think? Who do you think should be Queen? I agree, I actually agree with Stuart. Definitely Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver? What, what about you, Amy? Are, are you... Is that really a silly question? Yes, okay. So Amy has nominated herself as the Queen of Sci-Fi. No. <laughs> Amanda Tapping. <laughs> Amanda Tapping. Amanda Tapping, yeah. Yeah. Well, on Save Sci-Fi, a really interesting comment was made on the actual picture by Robert Arnes. And I thought that it was probably the best... This is the sort of thing I was going for when I posted it, um, was to get something like this, and he summarised it so so beautifully that I have to read it out. Um, the current queen? Hard to say. Possibly Katie Sackhoff? Um, Ooh. The last real queen would definitely be Amanda Tapping. She succeeded the former queen Sigourney Weaver, who herself took the mantle from the likes of Majel, Carrie Fisher, and Nicole Nicholas. Uh, Nicole's. N- nah, that. Nah. My brain Nichols. is. Yeah, Nichols. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. I don't know what I mean. So, I, I think we should just sort of, yeah, have a look at that a little bit, because I thought that was a really good way of sort of breaking it down. And it's. And it is pretty spot on. Katie has definitely taken um, a larger role since Battlestar Galactica in the sci-fi sort of genre. She's mm. popping yeah, up all over the place. Yeah, exactly. She did brilliant in Riddick. Boobs. Um, yeah. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> this Males. Less drooly hey. five-year-old. <laughs> one of us was good, and it's weird that it was the one that it was. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so, what about King? I'll, I'll, go. Go. I'll let Amy go first. <laughs> Ooh. Amy can go first. Who do you think, Amy? Christopher Judge. Cri- Christopher Judge. Okay. He has been in quite a lot of sci-fi. He was in Andromeda. He's been in SG-1 for years and the other Stargate stuff. Um, he also did a couple of... He did a, a shark... Thing that I can't really put my finger down on. Um, what that was. Can I cut in for a sec? Yeah. Um, when he was in Sydney for Comic Con, uh, he was actually he bothered to walk around and say hi to a bunch of people. We we're all standing in line to play Evolve at the moment, and he kind of like jumped in line, and we actually ended up playing two rounds with him. Nice. He did hmm. some. He was doing similar stuff at Brisbane City, yeah, at Brisbane Comic Con as well. Yeah. Stealing yeah. someone's lightsaber. To be honest. Yeah, was taking awesome. Jason Momoa with it. Yeah. <laughs> <That one. laughs> a lot of the guests actually at Supernova do the same thing as well. Yeah. They try to. Yeah. They try well, to. Supernova yeah. does try and yeah. get them out. Stop them. Yeah, well, we had, um, what, 
with the 360 cam, we had Tori Higginson join us with the Battlestar Galactica boys for the 360 cam, which was awesome. And I, and I managed to get the Power Ranger actors. Yeah. Which Joker, is... Go Power Rangers. I'm sorry. Don't. Don't. Just don't. <laughs> I don't want my fanboy coming out yet. Good <laughs> <laughs> so, boy. Save that for Gold Coast. Yeah. Anyway, slightly back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> back up, back up, back up. Back up on topic. King of sci-fi. For me, there is two in the running for King. First one would be George Takai, and that's more for his mo. And that's more for his current sort of status. Yeah. Than anything else. The second one nomination will be Harrison Ford, because of what he's been in. Because High and Solo. Well, not only Han Solo. You've got Indiana Jones. You've got so many films. So many other things that he's done. Um. But I would, but I would rate him probably a similar generation as sort of. George. Well, George Takai would be sort of like the the Carrie Fisher era king. Yeah, sure. And then when Sigourney Weaver took over, Harrison Ford took Took over. over. That's a good point. Um, Okay. When Amanda Tapping sort of took over, who was sort of the big name in sci-fi then for sort of like the king? If you know what I mean. Oh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Pa- Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick. Yeah, I can yes, see Sir Patrick. That's actually a really good point. Sir Patrick, yeah. e- Ian McKellen. Yeah. Well, who you got? That's, that's this is going to sound ironic, but I'm going to put my name, put my hand down for Richard Dean Anderson. Yeah. Because <laughs> not only for Jack, not only for Jack, MacGyver. All of his work as MacGyver as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I gotta admit, totally MacGyver, MacGyver was sci-fi when he was able to create to jury rig a nuclear reactor with a yeah. couple of paper clips, some chewing gum wrapper, and duct tape. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say the current king at the like if we're going this generation, that is probably it's- Vin Diesel. No, if it's <laughs> no, the current no, generation, there's only no. one person, only two people that can possibly go to. Yep. And I hate having having to say one because I love one of his characters he's done and I hate one of the others. Oh. Nathan who? Fillion for one. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, okay. that's actually I'll, I'll back that call. I was going yeah, su- to I was going to suggest The Rock. No. But no, and the other one, oh, what's his name? What did he play? Robert Downey Jr. Uh that I think <laughs> he's just the king, period. No, no. no. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's He's sort yeah, of the Thanos. Give me, give me a sec, give me a sec. <laughs> give me a second. One yeah. second. Producing I, I on the have, fly. I have Fucking one that no one's actually thought John of. John Barrowman. Oh, Barrowman. Oh, oh yeah. It's a toss-up between Fillion and Barrowman. Barrowman. At this point in time. That sounds like an incredibly kinky slash story. Just saying. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Where's my Let's not go boys? there. <laughs> yeah. This is a family. This is a family show. Actually, I have thought. I have thought someone that no one's really thought of yet. Who? Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime himself. Oh, oh God! Jody says yeah. Barrowman with about sixteen <laughs> exclamation marks. So Barrowman shakes fist. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want, I like I said, Sir Patrick, but also um, Chris, uh, Christopher Lee. Oh, Dooku. Dooku. Dooku, yeah. Hell, even in his Christopher work Lloyd? as Saruman in Lord of the Rings yeah, and, um... Yeah. There's a lot of like, big-name actors from around now that could easily be king. Yeah. Um, let's try and narrow it... Okay. Let's break it up in <sighs> yeah. the same sort of brackets as Queen. So we've got... The current one is Katie Sackhoff, and then we've got from... that'll We'll call that one the... The 2010... 2010... 2010, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2010s ish. Amanda Tapping will be the 2000s ish. Um, Sigourney Weave will be the 90s. 90s. Yeah, no. Um, 80s. Yeah. 80s, 80s sorry. 90s. Um, and. 90s then. Um, well, Amanda can be eight, 90s. 90s, 2000s. Yeah. Um, and the others can be, what, 60s, 70s? Yeah, there's like Harry Fisher's 70s. Yeah. 70s, sort of early 80s before Sigourney. Yeah. So, 60, And then before that, it'd be uh, Nichelle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got them... I've got those three all in a little group together, so... Um, so... We've got... We'll go with the Queen from sort of the mid-thousands 
to current would be we'll go with Katie just to make it easy. Starbuck. Starbuck. Mm. Um, and not only Starbuck, but other things she's done. Um, then Power bef- fandom. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Um, then we've got so the mid nineties to two th- mid thousands was Amanda Tapping. So who would we say would be around then? Patrick Stewart. Yeah, that's during the peak of um next gen. Yeah. Well, yeah. was it next gen eighties though? No. Next gen was late nineties. It was. No, 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 no. Yeah. Late. No, next gen was early nineties. Early nineties. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd say more around that same sort of time frame would have been uh, Richard Dean Anderson as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Patrick Stewart or Richard Dean Anderson? I th- Honestly... Oh, that's hard. I know where all these Stargate fanboys are going to go. I'm not going to be happy yeah. about this. Yeah, well, okay. I'm not... I'm, not, I'm not claiming him in there as a Stargate fanboy. I'm just saying he's done enough to have earned it. Yeah. On between the two major series he's worked in. Well, not only that, I I'm not just looking at it as an actress. I'm looking at it as what they've done behind the <laughs> as camera as well as in front of. Yeah, actor, actress. What I don't, I'm just thinking of the man type of thing. The point is that um, the point I'm trying to get to is that Patrick Stewart he helmed a lot of the next gen projects later on. Yeah, he but did. Stargate SG One never would have happened without it without Richard Dean Anderson. He was behind the camera and in front of it from day one. Mm. So that's pretty close to me. So if we take in what they've done since then, Patrick Stewart, yeah. hands down, no contest. No, nah. well, don't forget, Richard has had quite a few health issues. Oh yeah, I'm well, well aware of that. And his daughter made him pull out of um, the series originally, so he could, so he could spend more time with her. So yes, that's understand. And I, we perf- oh, you understand that we're taking that into consideration. But like that doesn't take away from at all. Exactly, it doesn't take away from it. That, like I said, I'm giving him credit for far more Guys, work in the series. I've yep. got to drop out for five minutes. I'll be back in a sec. Oakley, Oakley. Um, so yeah. Patrick Stewart or Richard Dean Anderson? Amy, go. Um, we'll go with Patrick because um, Richard would have been the generation before, technically. He was the same generation as Carter. Yeah. 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 He sort of. Yeah, he's sort of in between. Yeah. Because he's the generation before, but also um, Carter's generation, Amanda's generation. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did bleed through from Sigourney Weaver to Amanda in the timeline. Mm. We, we, yeah, um, yeah. Do we want to? Okay, it's, it's uh, actually. I think. Uh, when did that come back? Two thousand and five. No. See, so he. Uh, we'll give him two kings. We. <laughs> okay. Because it's really hard to pick. Mm. Yeah, it really. She is. has a fair point on that. She does. It is it is ridiculously hard to pick those to pick between the two of them. Okay, Patrick Stewart becomes the eighties to nineties, mid nineties, and Richard Dean Anderson goes mid nineties to mid thousands. Okay. Yeah, I'll call that. I'll agree with that. All right, I'm good with that. Yep. And it also means we finally get to pair up Amanda Tapping Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> like I didn't see that coming. Coming. Yeah, okay, so... Okay, so who's the most recent... um... Well, yeah, the most recent one. Um, Uh... Now, it's a mix-up for me between um, John Barrowman and Nathan Fillion. Because, now, admittedly, Nathan has fallen away from sci-fi, whereas John is still heavily in sci-fi. So that would lean me in his way, his favour. Especially with his work in Arrow. Assuming I remember the names right. Yeah, no, he's Arrow. <laughs> he's <me. laughs> oh, Batman's Arrow, he's Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just... If, you're, if we're going to go off by complete utter fangasms at a convention... <laughs> yeah, Barman. that's dangerous. Barrowman. 
I don't know. I'd have to go with Fillion under under da- under Scarecrow's criteria. You sure? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, the I Fillion know, fangirls know. are way more rabid and yeah, actually, way uh, actually, scarier. Actually, yeah, I've had, I have heard things actually. Way, way. <laughs> I think scarier. we've all heard things. It's never, never nice to find out some of the yeah. stuff that goes on there. <laughs> yeah, no, run. We'll, we'll, no, we'll, we'll get to find out in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, um, oh Christ! I'm gonna be down there. Yeah, you are. You're gonna so, be working. Have fun. So you got. Ca- okay, carry on. I might be on. somewhat safe. <laughs> okay, so it's John Barrowman or Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Fillion. Well, Jody's uh, voting for Barrowman. Yeah, so. Jody's voting for Barrowman. I'm actually, I'm gonna go for Barrowman as well. Just, just like I know Firefly's got such a massive following, but Barrowman did such a good job in Torchwood. Yeah. Doctor Who, Torchwood. Yeah, Doctor Torchwood, uh, Arrow, currently Arrow at the moment. Like, that's yeah. three big things at the moment. So. I'm going okay. to put my, I'm gonna have to put my name down for Barrowman as well, based sheerly upon what happened at last year's Sydney Nova. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> what part? The part where he actually stood up on the table and shouted out to all the fans who were still waiting for signatures after, on Sunday after... Supernova had officially closed and said that both he and Stan Lee had come to an agreement that and everyone was going to get their stuff signed. Yes, I knew about that. That's awesome. Uh, I was in the line at the time for Stan Lee. Like that's that's such a, a huge thing. Yeah. Like I mean, that's that's want. that's a pure and honest thing for the fans. Nothing else. Like they. Can you, that have... pissed off the that pissed off the guy in charge. Of okay, let's go on. Stuff sack. Stuff sack. There. What? Oh. Next. <laughs> Okay, so last but not least, the the king from the sixties and seventies. My vote's Harrison Ford. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone that comes close to him. I I can't yeah. think of anyone. Okay, so as the timeline runs at the moment, we've got um, because Transformers was eighties, like it wasn't even around. Yeah. Um, you've got. Hang on, Harrison Ford was uh, was after the sixties. Thank you very much. Sixties, he was still doing westerns. Fair point. No, sure. The, the, the credit where credit was due. That is a fair point. Seventies, eighties, then. Yeah. Seventies, eighties is Harrison. Which means sixties, yeah. so uh, have to be William Shatner. No, George Takai. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> oh my, my, my. <laughs> I'm I sorry. I had to go watch there. Fifty Shades of Grey later. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder how many times it's going to be asked to say that over at Supernova. Oh my. <laughs> anyway, um, I, what you need to do is someone needs to print out those words on a speech bubble and get their photo carry taken with him holding it. around. Yeah, just <laughs> every time they see him, hold it up in the air and have it looking like it's coming from his face and take a photo. <laughs> You're like, wow. Somebody just wanted life. I would actually see someone do that. Someone probably already has. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, um, so from the 60s and 70s, that only really leaves... um, the William Hartlett. Hartlett, 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 Hartlett... Oh, the original Doctor. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Um, Because when he was in this... Because he's 63 is when he started that, and he was... Huge. He was massive for the first few like years shit. of Doctor. Who, for the first few years of Doctor <laughs> Who, before the Alzheimer's took over. Mm. It looks like you've like, got he, a sign he, to make, Stuart. I'm uh... back. <laughs> <laughs> uh... What are she, we looking at? What are we looking at? Horrendous, though. Uh, oh, we're just talking about how someone needs to make up a sign that's a speech bubble sign that says "Oh my," and they just stand really far away from um, George Takai. <laughs> and every time you see, you see them, hold it up in a way that looks like the speech bubble's coming from his mouth. And just take or just photos. Give it to him. Or just give it to him. Yeah. And just yeah, pin and it on the wall him, above get... his head. <laughs> yeah, and, and then give him the sign of the, uh, on the Sunday of Supernova. Uh, that'd be funny. Um, You'll probably actually just walk up and go, Oh my, that was you. Yeah. So 60s and 70s era king is what we're doing right now. 60s yeah. and 70s? Um, oh. so, so the... We got William Hartlett was Hartlett Hartnell whatever that's the first Doctor, the original Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Hartnell, uh, Hartnell, Hartnell. That's it. My yeah. brain just doesn't do names today. There's, ever. there's really 
no one. Wait, in that. no. There is one other that I can think 70s. of. 70s. No, if you were, if we're looking at 70s alone, it's six, Tom no, Baker. It's six, no, it's 60s, 70s. Yeah, it's, six, right. it's from the 60s into the 70s. So about Tom the same Baker. time that Carrie Fisher, um, Nickel Nichols, and um, Majel blah 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 um, were, right. were the big names in sci-fi. Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying right that, now, Gene that, Roddenberry. That was actually going to be my suggestion. Was Gene Roddenberry was going to be late. number two. Dad, dang it, dad, damn it. Yeah. I still think I'm going to go William Hartnell though. So, I think just as because I am a Ho- Hoovian and he, like if <laughs> if you like if you read like watch the documentary that I did it, Adventures in Space and Time, like you saw how rough it was. Yeah when Doctor Who started to what it is now like yeah. I, it's, I it's honestly, still pretty rough just saying <laughs> no, yeah, yeah but I honestly think without him I don't think it would have been as successful as it ha- has been yeah I don't think it would have taken off the way it did yeah I definitely yeah. agree with that but yeah I, I, I actually would have to go with Gene Roddenberry I'm sorry but um, no, I, I, I think he, actually he actually no no I've, I've changed my mind Gene Roddenberry is not eligible for king why Why? because why? he is a god worshipped <laughs> at his feet thank you Bing. <laughs> why then he's a god king <laughs> oh would you <laughs> yeah anyway god, he's a god uh, does that mean he's a god oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry the snake yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get us killed for that one you know oh yeah I'm done, I'm done. I'm hide away from that one <laughs> wow, that's that's half of the show gone. Yeah. Well, you have was... it. Wow. <laughs> Shall we move to the next um Yeah, bit? that that that's pretty much what I was gonna do. I was just gonna say, okay, this Spoiler is just time. this is no no in a second. Um this is the results that we have. The Queen from the sixties through seventies um were uh a three way tie ish, kind of. Between Majel, Carrie Fisher, and Nicole. Wait, eight... sorry, hold on, but Wars didn't come till 74. What? Wars didn't come till 74. If Tom Baker's not eligible by logic, neither is Carrie Fisher. She was doing stuff long before Star Wars, mate. Yeah. Long before Star Wars was coming along, she was doing so much. Yeah. Am I going to have to separate you two and put you in a separate room? Anyway, this is the results. It's too late to make changes. You lose. I win. Shovel. As always. Shovel. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Shovel. They were succeeded by Sigourney Weaver and Sir Patrick Stewart during the 80s and early 90s. Yes. Yep. Then in the uh, um, in the mid-90s to mid-thousands, Amanda Tapping and Richard Dean Anderson took the throne. And then after they ceded the throne in the mid-thousands, John to Barrowman now. and Katie Sackoff took it. And yep. they, they uh, hold uh, it to now. Until there's a decent that. challenge. No arguments from me. Right. Well, I'll make up that picture after we finish the podcast <laughs> and post it on Save Sci Fi probably tomorrow. Okay, moving uh, on to the next topic. Yeah, Unless... Hey, we yeah. killed half the podcast with that one. Yeah, I know. I'll we'll have, we'll have to tweet that out to Barrowman. I am quite surprised. Anyway, um, we have Arrow and Flash. Oh. If oh. You haven't seen the so most recent episode, you, know? you will be airlocked. Airlocked means you don't come back. Anyway, um, so who hasn't seen the most recent episode of Arrow and Flash? Me, because I don't watch either. Same. Okay. Me, I, <laughs> I keep missing the taping. Yeah. Wait. Whoa. 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 We just wait. Did you say taping? Yes, I tape it and try to watch it later. <laughs> As in. As as in VHS taping. No. I was um, gonna yeah. say, <laughs> get <laughs> with at least the twentieth century, maybe the twenty first. Jeez, Amy, do we need to get you a DVR? <laughs> <laughs> she has one. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, <laughs> moving along. Um, no, this... no, we killed Scarecrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we expected it to happen eventually. Yeah. Come on. Okay, so this week um, Arrow and Flash both came back from their mini hiatus thing that they went on. Oh, Flash. 
Wow. So, so, so Fanboy. I will let Stuart take this one. Stuart, you have... Pants on. As long as you keep my your pants, pants on, on, you have the segment. On. My pants are on. Yeah, right. uh, so, uh, Flash really took a oh, turn. Yeah. Oh yeah, just, just, just before you start. Spoilers! spoilers. If you cringe at me about spoilers, it's not my bloody problem, you didn't switch it off! You <laughs> suck! Yeah, I'm talking to go, you! There are most certainly going to be spoilers. A lot. Yeah. So, I'll start with Flash and move to Arrow, because Flash has so much more that I wasn't expecting so early. So, Flash uh, came back this week, and uh, so um, it it leads off with the, uh, the the original Weather Wizard, as Cisco calls it, <laughs> yeah. uh, brought older brother um, coming back and wanting vengeance for his brother's death. And he's got substantially better control of his yeah, abilities. He can, he can literally make a storm ap appear in, in a building. Not only that, he can make hail appear in his hand. That, yeah. He can, he can summon anything he wants. He can yeah. suck the oxygen out of you if he wanted to. Yeah, it's... it's it redefines slightly a little bit OP. Just just yeah. a little. So he, he's going after um, Joe, because Joe was the one who killed him, not Barry. Uh, um, or his he, uh, his younger brother, I should say. Yeah. Uh, um. So he um. I'm just gonna do like quick synopsis, basically. Yep. Go. Uh, he captures Joe. Uh, Barry uh goes uh goes up tries to save Joe. We go then we go to a very very flashpoint paradox, <laughs> like way flashpoint paradox than I was expecting. Cisco finds out that um, Harrison Wells is not Harrison Wells. Harrelson Wells is in fact I'm gonna get the first name wrong. I know the last name is is Thorn is Thorn, because he's related to Eddie. He's a dis he's actually, if I remember the timeline correctly, he's actually Eddie's son, I think. No, it's like it's like a heaps old. A great great something, I don't know. No, it's something ridiculous. But yeah. The point he is he's from way further in the future than future. He, we thought he was. Yeah. He was. St he tried to come back uh, 15 years ago when Barry was a child to kill him, and ended up killing um, Barry's uh, the mum. mum. So no, he didn't. He try and come back to kill Barry's mum. No, no, no. He said no, no. He said um, <laughs> that he was not trying to kill Barry's mum. He wanted to come back and kill Barry to stop the whole Flash thing ha ever happening. Okay, but now he ne and now he needs the Flash's speed to get speed him back to, to his back time. To his time, which we'll get to briefly because it gets really cool. Yeah. Uh, he then uh, supposedly ends up killing Cisco, in that timeline at least. Yeah. Because Barry, uh, uh, Barry and Iris finally kiss. So yeah, yeah. we're finally going there. Uh, then Barry changes in front of Iris into the Flash outfit, creates a wind vortex that's stopping a tidal wave that uh, Weather Wizards trying to destroy the entire of of the city with. Yeah, I, I still don't quite understand how the hell that even makes sense. Let's stop a wave with n no air. Wind. Because when do I need to see here? It's DC uh, and it's the Flash. Okay, uh, 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 good. I'm happy with that explanation. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. So Barry's running uh, back and forth, creating a a, um, a wind vortex wall that's going to uh, reflect the water. He runs so fast that he actually splits the time barrier and goes back in time. Just a little bit back in time. Well, yeah, not not so far back, but a little bit back in time that he briefly saw period, and he was confused as to why he saw a second self. Yeah. So Barry can now time travel, which is, which is uh, slightly OP. Well, that's that's what happens in um, Flashpoint Paradox. Yeah. So. This is, like this is very 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 Flashpoint Paradox. Uh. Do yeah, I, should let's... I explain what Flashpoint Paradox is to those who don't know? No. Sure, no. 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 <laughs> no. I, 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 can, I can hear Coop, uh, sorry, Metal Rift, tying a rope around his neck, and he's about ready to fall back with off his chair. <laughs> oh, no, I'm laying flush on my, bled, my bed, so... You're w laying flush on your bled, so you, what you're saying is you cut yourself. Just, just choose life, Just that's all I'm saying. Yeah. He's laying uh, on his bed, leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Just, anyone who is bored by Stuart, please choose life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 
<laughs> sometimes, sometimes I consider it too. It's it's not worth it in the long run. I'm I'm surprised Jody isn't saying anything right now. Yeah. <laughs> she could throw me under the bus. I don't care. All right, moving along. <laughs> moving along along to Arrow. So Arrow uh, ended off with Oliver and Diggle going um to uh is it Mandapa? Yeah, the the where the guy the, was the the, the the base of the League of Assassins, basically. Yeah. Um. Uh, saving Baram, uh, saving uh, Malcolm. I'll call him Baraman. It's easier yeah. saying Baraman. <laughs> saving Baraman because Thea was stupid enough to try and get it killed. Yeah. By League of Assassins. So they get captured. Um, and then Rage, uh, Rage Al Ghul yeah. offers Oliver the chance to become the next Rage Al Ghul. Yeah. So that's the end of of the previous episode. This episode, they're back in they're back in Silent City. And Oliver is contemplating the decision on whether he should take the offer or not, because yeah. the because the police have turned on him. No, uh, no, just the dad. Well, oh yeah, just um, just the captain of the police, I should say. Yeah. What else is new? Yeah, well, no, it's, no, it's, it's a bit flip floppy this show. Yeah, it's more it's more flip, it's more flip floppy than the bold and the beautiful. <laughs> wow. Ouch. I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't like a lot of things. Um, okay, just, just, just so you know, I am currently oh, dragging yeah. you by your ears towards the airlock. Buddy, if you <laughs> can turn, you compare it to the Vault and the Beautiful to Arrow, that's an insult to the Vault and the Beautiful. <laughs> it's an insult to Arrow. <laughs> Continue <laughs> on. Um, uh, Nissa, or um, Talia Al Ghul, they call him Nissa in the show, I don't know why. I prefer Talia Al Ghul. Yeah, the, the daughter. Uh, the daughter of Raish, uh, is released and sent back uh, to uh, Nandapa, where she finds out that Olva was offered the place as the next Raish, and she is pissed. Yeah, just a tiny little bit stabby. So, so take take normal PMS, times it by ten, and and then add Nissa onto it. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just multiply she, by lunatic assassin, and you're getting close. Not happy. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, Cause so, she wants uh, it all because she wants Bruce. Um, well, we Bruce don't. Have it. Well, Bruce, uh, Batman is not involved in this yet, so this is lo this is pre Batman, I believe. Yeah. Can't be really. So, yeah, I know. I know. Ba totally. Batman doesn't. Uh, and okay, put it this way: Batman doesn't exist in the Arrow universe. Not yet. I obviously, once Justice League comes in, obviously, but... Well, the Justice League movies do not tie into the Arrow Flash timeline. They're totally independent. So there's going to be two different Flash... Uh... I know, I know, I know. Can we just take them all out back and shoot them now? I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, continue on. Um, yeah. So the episode ends off, uh, basically, with uh, Oliver not uh, cho choosing not to be Ray Al Ghul. He's going to stay in as the arrow of in um, Silent City. So Rage takes it matters into his own hands. Somehow has a somehow has an arrow costume. It's not like they're hard to make. <laughs> sure. It's a green it's a green cloak. Exactly with a hood. <laughs> Don't can't, can't forget and the hood. A, and a bow and arrow, like and it's the exact bow and arrows anyway. And he's going around killing people and saying that the and trying to make the arrow ki saying that the arrow is killing again. Yeah. Basically, he's trying like to that turn worked so well the first time. No. He's basically, he's trying to turn the city against the arrow. Yeah. I get eh, my point. Cities are so flinky anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next Sheeple. episode is going to be funny. <laughs> because next episode is Oliver and Roy confronting each other in their outfits. Oh, sorry, not. Ooh la la. Well, not Roy, Ray, I should say. So, Atom. Yeah, that should be interesting. Oh, yeah, quick note, just just a quick side question: Who here has seen Shield, the newest one? Damn it! No, don't say shit. Please don't say shit. <laughs> no. Okay. S spoiler free version. At least not major spoilers. Um, it, the pillar Stuart. thing releases this gas stuff, which gives people superpowers. Shh, 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 but. Shh. It, I haven't seen half the back half of season two, so shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh. And he's gone. Um, 
I'll call him back in a second. Um, anyway, the pillar thing releases a gas which mutates you, gives you... T- Oi, I thought I got rid of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I muted you for a second just so I could explain this thing and then I'll bring you back. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> he's gone again. He's, I've, I've thrown him out the airlock. Anyway. You yeah, uh, gave him a suit. Yeah. The, 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 the pillar releases this gas thing which gives you superpowers. But the cost of those superpowers is you become horribly mutated. Do you, do you want to get mutated and get exposed to the gas even though it'll make you potentially a hideous monster? You could look exactly the same and gain superpowers. No. You could become a human echidna hybrid and gain... I have no idea. Basically, if you become a human way. echidna hybrid, then I reserve the right to call your knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this is their way of bringing the, the Inhumans. Yeah, effectively, yeah. It's them bringing in the humans. But yeah. Yes. Like, yes. I'm not going to call them Inhumans. I guess they call them mutants or something. No, no. no they uh, they, they, they can't mutants. use the word mutants because oh, no. that's no. owned by Fox. Fox and that. But they, that's it's suspected it. that they're going to call Quicksilver and... Um, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch Inhumans. In the, in the movie because <laughs> of the way they get their powers. Yes, because it's different. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I was just curious as to if you guys would be willing to get horribly mutated and potentially look like a fool to gain st- stupidly powerful superpowers. Nope. No. Uh, if, I, if I can control lightning, maybe. You I have to say... You don't get a choice with, on the power. It's pure random. Uh, I'm with Amy on this. No. No? Let me just put it this way. Uh, stupidly mutated with superpowers... Or go make a deal with Tony. <laughs> fair point. Fair point. Fair point. Okay, anyway, moving. Do we. Back on the arrow and flash stuff. Yes. Actually, with uh, Flash, actually, there was a trailer that dropped over a convention in America. Yeah. And it actually shows Mark Hamill's trickster. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with that. The, the, yeah. um, the, the, is it the Pally Fest trailer? I believe the convention was called Pally Fest. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, we heard about Mark Hamill coming back as Trickster a while ago. Yes, um, now we actually get footage. We actually, there's actually footage of it and stuff. Yeah. And the, um, Captain Cold and uh, Heat Boys back. Nice. The Prison Break Brothers return. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't care what they do. They're <sighs> still going to be the Prison Break Brothers. Prison Break Brothers. Yeah. Actually, Prison Break, is that a sci fi? No. No. <laughs> what by a long shot? Well, the guy's got superpowers. No. <laughs> There's more freaking drama in that than in days of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> if you can survive the drama, then you get put to sleep by. Uh. There's more. There's more drama in it than Lost. Yeah, I, I really went there. Yeah. Yeah, so you went there. Okay. Anyway, back on topic. Um, actually. There's not much time left. There's, we only got about ten minutes left, so fifteen. No, we don't. He's just trying to cut down my news time. A little bit, because you've been talking for the last fifteen minutes, and I'm half asleep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, flash and arrow. Um, just real quick, I just want to say for the flash and arrow, I'm actually very much looking forward to how the atoms going to play across both series. Oh, that Adam awesome. suit, that Adam suit looks very impressive. There is a crossover episode coming up soon, actually. Yeah. So. Uh, because it's because from what I saw in the trailer, um, <laughs> it um. Can we just leave the was, crossover episodes in the hands of the masters of the crossover episodes? Fan fiction. Power Rangers. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The Power Rangers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja. Ep- Teenage Mutant Ninja episode. I can see it. Okay, so so what you're saying is that episode is so horrible it broke your brain. Moving right along, nothing to see (laughs) here, nothing to see here. Wait, can I say something? Yes, there was a Power Ranger Ninja Turtles crossover episode. Look it up on YouTube if you want to. Can I say something about the turtles? It just happened in the comic books. Donatello's been killed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I saw that news drop the other day. It was like, ooh, hello. Yeah. Well, they've, 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 eventually they they've got to kill turtle. some of them off. They murdered a turtle. Yeah. 
turtle soup for, for dinner, anyone? Actually, here's a question for oh, you. Bastard. <laughs> no, <laughs> Too soon? Right. Too soon? Here's a question. Here's a question open to the floor. If you fall in love with a sentient alien, say a Vulcan or whatever, I'm just saying Vulcan as an example because it's humanoid, but it could be a bloody twill, it could be anything. If you hook up with that alien, say they're compatible because reasons, um, would it be classed as bestiality? No, because they're humanoid. I think it'd be more interspecies. Yeah. Well, that was a good discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually had to. That actually, yeah, it'd be interspecies, it'd be more interspecies. but no bestiality. Yeah. yeah. It depends what one you're trying to breed with. It may be human, but, but it may have ears, paws, and tail. Yeah. What about yeah, a Wookiee? But if... <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be beastie. Yeah. Now we know what Han, Han and Shuri get up to all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. hey, okay. Next. Uh, anyway, news time. All right. You have uh, three uh, minutes. Go. Oh Jesus! Uh, Thunderbirds trailer has dropped, and it has CGI out the ass. Yeah, yeah and it looks like crap. And yeah. Yeah. We're from right along on that one. Yeah. Leaving that one the fuck alone and moving right uh, along. Uh, scientists solved the chicken and the egg conundrum. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. There, there is a uh, obviously the whole what started the it's whole. It's called thing. abiogenesis. Yes. Uh, I haven't actually had much time to look at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah tell yeah. me now. Yeah, a, a, abiogenesis is effectively this is effectively non-life turning into life, and scientists have been trying to work out how that could possibly happen for a while. And there was a recent breakthrough in it, which I can't remember because I read the news a week ago, and a lot of stuff has happened since then, and yeah. my brain scrambled. Yeah, but it's always right. scrambled, so it's not really that much of a difference. Yeah. Moving right along. Neil Tyson's The Late Night TV Show will premiere Neil on the deGrasse Tyson. I always you got the missed name wrong. half his name. You're I fired. Was say, <laughs> I was going to get it wrong, <laughs> so I just skipped it. I yeah, was going to write you on Colton's mind. Yes, it's, it's, and I couldn't care if you got anyone else's name wrong, but it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. You can't. You screw with him, you screw with science, you screw with science, you screw with me. And I'm your boss, so. I win. Respect <laughs> my authority. Yeah. Right, anyway, my... Oh, so read, read a funny Tyson. note on that. Two seconds. I'm sorry. Get back to that. Read a funny note at work. They were trying to promote respect between staff members. <laughs> Someone found that South Park meme online and thought and didn't know what the context was. Yeah. And put it on the poster, <laughs> trying to promote respecting all your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> Failed. <laughs> they forget the whole point of South Park is to kill Kenny. <laughs> they, <You're bad> <laughs> it. <laughs> it was. I, I took one look at the sign and I just started laughing. My boss was standing <laughs> next to me. And he goes, "Why do you? Why uh, do you find uh, that so funny?" I explained it to him. He's just like, "Oh." oh. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson's late night TV show is going to premiere on the twentieth of April at eleven p.m. EST. I I think that's. I Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, no, I, I'm trying to think what well, that is on Australian time. I think No, that's... Australian time would be... Like 10 something? Oh, it'd be it's some... Ten hour, yeah, it's a 10 hour gap. Yeah. No, it's not. No. It's... it's Longer than that. that. Isn't it? Well... It's sometime early. It's like sometime in the morning for us. Yeah, it's like ridiculous AM. So yeah. It's not going to happen. No. Keep going. Uh, did David Tennant spoil the next Marvel superhero? Question mark. And... Doctor Strange... Any news article that ends title that ends with a question mark is generally a no. Yeah. I forgot hey, um, what the damn of the ru- name of the rule is, but that's the, effectively what it is. Plus, it's David Tennant, and we have to chuck this on David Tennant news because it's Barrowman. Exactly. We we can't say no to Tennant. We, we, a little bit of Tennant over here. So yeah, uh, Tennant visited Don't go the Marvel there, Dave. offices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So David visited the uh, the Marvel offices uh, last week. I did. Excellent. Not yet. Why was I not informed? <laughs> um. <laughs> and um, he was taking pictures with um, arts and officers and stuff and there's a picture of him next to Spidey Gwen so yes so we, so we could get um, Spidey Gwen can I say um, I found a small thing that came up middle of, uh, like towards the end of last week yep they've announced the runtime for the new Avengers movie 2 hours 50 yep nice. nearly 3 hours 
Oh yeah! It's gonna be awesome. We are all we are all rocking a cinema day one. We're probably gonna do a special cast for it then. Um, the next next night. Yeah, I think we've already agreed on that. So. Yeah. Um, moving along. Jim Parsons wants to play the Riddler. Yes. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. I, what I would Hell love to yes. actually on the on the note of roles that he could play, what I would love to see is Rowan Atkinson as Mr. Bean, and yeah. him playing Bean Sheldon. Junior. Oh no no! I'd like to see Sheldon with Bean. Yeah. <laughs> that no, 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 no. Bean and Bean Junior, Sheldon being Bean Junior. I think that would be the most ridiculous thing in the universe to watch. But yeah, and um, so uh, in an interview, uh. Uh, Jim Parsons said he'd like to be a villain and he'd like to play the Riddler and then it was like and then he and I quote he says I would be dope as the Riddler yeah <laughs> wow it's that awkward moment when they drop words they obviously don't normally use no moving right along and this is great the X-Files revival nears Green Knight yes oh yeah Jillian now, Anderson and David oh, I'm gonna get it wrong just kill me now Okay, goodbye. You're at the airlock. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next news, not that one. Yeah. Ah, yeah, the, the, Fantastic the, the X Four Files, news. To be honest, just oh. real quick, still on the X Files. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't think they should. The X Files had a brilliant run, and it you was don't fantastic. Think it, be rebooted? it doesn't need to be rebooted. Nah, it does not need it. There's, That'd there's be like quite a I few mean... shows that have been told story from start to end. A lot of people hated the ending of X-Files. I understand that. I really do. But it's it'd be like rebooting Stargate SG-1. That's what I was going to say. It doesn't work. Yeah. Like rebooting it Look, 40 years later is a different matter. Rebooting it 20 years later? Not so much. There's, there's, Look, there should be at least, a, at least a two generation gap on reboots. You can't reboot something until at least a min mandatory minimum of one generation for movies or two generations for TV shows. Look at what Battlestar Galactica. Trek? Battlestar Galactica, the original series, was what, 70s-ish? was 30 years until the reboot, and the reboot was spectacular. Yeah. That, that, that rule should apply for all TV shows. I believe the only time that rule's been broken and it's paid off was the new Trek, was um, Next Gen, like original series to Next Gen. <laughs> Yeah, but he next... was saying something about the good moves for a second there. Yeah, yeah. But, but next gen isn't a reboot; it's a continuation. It yeah, it's a, it's a re... no, it's, it's a revival. As... No, no, it's actually counted as a sequel, not a revival. Yeah. Mm. So it's... it does actually come on the sequel. Exactly. So it's Sorry. slight, yeah. slightly different, but yeah. I, I see your point. So anyway, yes, Stuart, keep going. The news. You've got five minutes. Go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, good news for uh, Fantastic Four. We are going to have the traditional costumes. Uh, okay. Oh, and stretchy. Yes. yes. No. Kind of need to be stretched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No tight costumes for for Reed Richards this time. Yay. <laughs> Next, go. Uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson wants Black Adam to fight the Justice League. Okay. So, uh, Dwayne, uh, obviously. Uh, Dwayne Johnson is no is going to be Black Adam when the Shazam movie drops. Yeah. Shazam. Um. He he wants to be in it as Black Adam fighting them, when, in the Justice League movie itself. Okay. A little bit of cool news. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't mind the Rock. The Rock's pretty good in most things he's in. He yeah, Ex he's actually... except for the most recent thing that I just saw a trailer for the the disaster movie. The, the big earthquake, can't think of what it's called. Oh, San Francisco. Um, that San, yeah. yeah, San Francisco. Yep, nah. No. Um, I'm sorry, I, Rock, but you just lost a third of your credibility. You make it um, back up with Fast and the Furious, but you lose it with that movie. <laughs> um, there's something else. Uh, the new Mission Impossible's just been dropped for uh, yes, July 31st. I was 31st. getting to that. <laughs> oh. uh, Stuart lost Stolen! his job as the news guy. <laughs> I wasn't finished, Junior. Yeah, San Andreas. That's it, San Andreas. Oh, yeah. San Andreas. Yes, thank you, Jody. I'm gonna watch it, and I'm probably gonna love it. I get yeah. a real kick out of disaster movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind so, disaster movies. I just can't. For some reason, I can't stand 2012. Oh, that reminds me. I've got to add 2012 onto my sci-fi list. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry. I've got War of the Worlds on there as well. The reboot, not the original. I was gonna fucking that say it. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I'll airlock your like ass. It. Well, no, did, uh, <laughs> 
Did, oh man, on the note of War of the Worlds, real quick, did you hear what um, they said on Comic Book Men? Yes. Yeah. What? It's like War of the Worlds was a brilliant, another brilliant movie ruined by a crappy ending, and then everyone's just like, "Whoa!" It's like yeah, diseases. Why would diseases survive? Is that a crappy ending? Yeah. It's like diseases. Why would diseases take them out? It's like um, just 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 go over there, man. Go over there. If you just just go, you're embarrassing yourself. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, keep going. Uh, speaking of uh, shows someone else wants to be in, uh, Gotham's Robin Lord Taylor, otherwise known as Oswald the Penguin Cobblepot, wants going to, to Supernova! Go... Woo! He's going to be at Supernova, and I will be getting photos of him. Wants to be on the Flash. He wants to stay. He wants to keep being a villain and, and go to Flash because he actually really loves it. Okay. Or, or um, watch what happens live is the other one he wants to go on as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, some Star Wars news. Yes. John Williams, John Williams has started recording the score for Force Un- for the Force Awakens. Now, oh, yeah. Sweet. Watch your own music for me. Both of you out the airlock now. Alright, keeping on Star Wars, and this is a little interesting. Star Wars Battlefront. The video game that um, EA have been producing are go- is going to debut at the Star Wars Celebration in April. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Now, oh, man. Battlefield, the, ba- Battlefield 2. Oh, Battlefront 2. So many memories. Yeah. The so many thing good with memories. this is... Is that EA have still said that there's going to be a, a Star Wars game debuting at E3. Ooh. What have Wait. they been working on? It's Wait. EA. It's probably some... Retarded remake of some other bullshit. There's, bullshit. there's two big options that either they could be doing. It's either the bounty hunter game that w- that was that there was concept for thirteen thirteen. Or I really hope it's Republic Commando two. Oh. Or everyone wait. has been wanting Republic Commando two for years and years and years now. Wait, um, there's also a third option. Sims. They can no, um. They can say drop that's a, a Republic three because that's not gonna work. They no, Please they, go, they could drop. Here. They could drop a beta. They can make. They can release an open beta for Battlefront. They won't. But that's not debuting though. The game's debut. Is, no, no. The game is debuting at Star Wars Celebration. So it's it's getting dropped. It's getting. It's like everything details is then. All right. It's completely new game being dropped at E3. Yes. Anyway, we've got two minutes What's left. Go, 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 go. Or you're gonna have no time left for news. Um, Mission, uh, Mission Impossible. Heard it, next. Uh, <laughs> Predator is in, is in Mortal Kombat 10. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Predator has been added into Mortal Kombat 10. Oh, God. Next. Predator vs. Jason. The face. Predator vs. Jason. Oh. Yeah. Plasma uh, Cannon to face. The, uh, Jared Leto was, uh, at a, was doing a concert over the weekend. There yeah. has been some footage that was put up of him. Um, he's got a uh, different colored hair now. Very like very bleachy coloured hair, and he did a very very dark uh, Mark Hamill Jokerish voice. Nice. There is a rumor going around that that could be his Joker voice. Nice. Next. <laughs> yes. You have that? thirty seconds. No, that's it. I'm done. That's it. You're done. Excellent. Hallelujah. What perfect timing you have, sir. Because there's about a minute left, so it's everyone's chance to say goodbye. So remember, just before everyone says goodbye, really quickly, I just want to say, make sure you check out the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. We post all sorts of cool stuff there, and we miss you. We want you to be there. Please, we love you. Don't leave us alone. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. It's just you and me now, listener. Yeah, we're all alone. It's 45 seconds left. I just wanted to say that we like having you here. We do. (laughs) The the funny part is, I can hear the other guys talking, but what they don't realize is I've actually muted them. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm... Slightly bored. Um, just sort of mix up the end of the show a little, even though I'm pretty sure Green will cut it. 
<laughs> well, the, uh, so anyway, guys, have fun, and I shall catch you next week. We will be doing top five worst sci-fi's ever, 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 ever.